Good morning. I'm Jane, and I'm glad to be back with you to share some good news for September 25th. Our cycle of daily readings has brought us again to the beginning of Jesus' ministry, as told by St. Luke. And today's gospel comes right after the story of Jesus' baptism, and it describes three ways the devil tried to tempt Jesus during the spirit-led wilderness sojourn that followed. I think the devil was very clever in the temptations he offered Jesus, because each of them could have seemed like a shortcut to the good goals Jesus wanted to accomplish. Let's look at them one by one. We start with Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, one does not live by bread alone. Well, this first temptation was simple and perhaps the hardest for a starving man to resist. Essentially, the devil said, if you are who you claim to be, then take this shortcut. Nourish yourself. Use your power to feed yourself. After all, you'll need to be well fed to set out on your mission. But Jesus replied, one does not live by bread alone. He understood that people need food, but spiritual needs are vitally important too. And in Matthew's version of the story, Jesus elaborated, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So it's a question of priorities. Do we put our material desires ahead of our relationship with God? Well, Jesus was clear that God comes first. The story continues. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. So this second temptation offered Jesus the power to rule over all the kingdoms of the world. Could that have seemed like a worthwhile shortcut? Jesus wasn't looking for personal glory, but if he had become the all-powerful earthly king, then he could have created God's kingdom of justice and peace without opposition. Tempting. But there was a catch. He would first have to worship the devil. And Jesus refused, saying, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Jesus was clear about who deserves worship. And now here's the third and final temptation. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and... On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Could Jesus have been tempted to prove exactly who he was and that he was under God's protection? Well, that might have been a shortcut to counter the disbelief that he would face from those who doubted him. But Jesus knew that he was God's son, and he felt no need to test God to prove it. Jesus was clear about his own identity 
and his relationship with God. So where did Jesus get the clarity with which he countered every one of the devil's moves? Each of Jesus' responses to the devil began with, it is written or it is said. Jesus was drawing here on his deep knowledge of the Hebrew scriptures. The quotes he used all come from the fifth book of the Law of Moses, which is the book of Deuteronomy in our Bibles. By the way, in the third temptation, the devil also tried using scripture from Psalm 91, but Jesus was still able to refute him. It was never an equal contest. Well, the good news for me today is that we, like Jesus, have a great treasury of help in our Bible, our Holy Scriptures. Psalm 119 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So we could add that it's also ammunition against the wiles of the devil. We can steep ourselves in the Bible and absorb the story of God's love for his creation. And doing that will help us to be clear that God comes first, that God is the one who deserves worship, and to know our identity as beloved children of God. Well, that's a lot of talking from me, so please join me in a very short prayer. Loving God, thank you for this season of crisp nights, colorful trees, and rich harvests. Bless the children and teachers now back at school, and bless all of us as we resume the fall pattern of worship and activities in the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, that's all for now. I look forward to seeing you in church or back here online in October. Bye for now.